When you watch the best players in the world, they all seem to have this super simple centered pivot. It's as if their head is staying perfectly still and they are just rotating around their spine. Well, to a certain degree, they kind of are. They're moving their body very efficiently to where they can stay centered in the backswing. Now, this actually makes the goal swing way easier. It creates less work for you to do in your downswing so that you can get a ball then ground contact far easier. This is crucial for good ball striking. Now, in today's video, we're gonna run through three key sort of parts of the body that we can focus on to allow you to achieve this centered pivot. So the first key to a center pivot is to understand how to move the pressure in your feet correctly. What I see a lot of golfers do is they actually try and shift and load into their trail leg. And it's a little bit of that misunderstanding of the term load. When amateurs hear the word load, and if I was a non-golfer, I'd think the same thing, is that they think, oh, I gotta get all my pressure into that foot. I wanna go there so then I can spring off. But actually that's gonna make life way harder for yourself. What we mean by load is that if you were to turn, you would feel like you would activate that full glute, you'd get a nice full hip turn, then from there you'd be able to shift on the way down. So that's just a bit of a miscommunication between coaches and players. So we've got to do a better job of that as an industry. Now, in terms of creating this center pivot, what do we want to be seeing in terms of pressure in the feet? Let's start with the address position. At address, I want you to favor a little bit more pressure on the lead leg, 55 to 60% of your weight on your lead leg. Then from there, to keep it as simple as possible, because we're trying to simplify down the goal swing, I want you to feel like as you're in that good position, you keep a little bit more pressure in that lead foot. If you start to let the pressure go to the trail foot, you're gonna to start to see that you're gonna sway off. Ultimately from there, it's gonna make life harder in the downswing. So for simplicity, we are trying to feel like we are a little bit more in the left foot at address. That might be 55, 60% for you. As you turn back, you wanna feel like you keep that pressure in the left foot. So just do a couple of swings. If I just pull this alignment stick back, you can see I've created a gap between the golf ball and the alignment stick. I'm gonna make a couple of swings where I feel like as I turn, I keep a little bit more pressure in my left leg. It kind of also feels like my left glute is staying target side of this alignment stick. And then I'm just gonna swing through and make sure I can hit target side of this imaginary line between the golf ball and the alignment stick. So let me do that a couple of times. 60, 40, I'm gonna feel like I stay 60, 40. Left glute muscle is gonna stay over over the target side of this alignment stick. And then from there, I'm just gonna turn through. And as you can see, very easy for me to get that low point forwards. And this is just gonna be crucial for simplifying down the goal swing for you. If we can have that center pivot, it's gonna massively help. So the next step is to progress up the body and put the emphasis on the hips. Now, today I wanna to give you a drill that you don't actually have to do at the golf course. I think it's really important to have drills that you can do anywhere, anytime, so then that way you can break golf down a little bit more manageable and get progress no matter where you are. So the first thing we're gonna do is go through that sort of checkpoint again with the two lines on the hips. If I set up to the ball right here and I draw a line down my left hip and my right hip, as I turn with the pelvis, I'm trying to see that at the top of my backswing, I have created about a golf ball worth of space between my trail hip and the line. My left glute muscle is gonna be connected to that lead line right there. Now, the reason why this occurs is actually due to the shape of the pelvis. It's sort of an oval shape. So when we obviously turn an oval, it's gonna arc around. Easiest way to feel this just to start with is just to stand tall, grab the club, pop it on your shoulders and just turn as if it's your backswing. You can see as you do that, just pay attention to how that trail hip works. You'll feel it work on that arc. And that's really important to understand is that we are trying to actually create a little bit of space there. One of the best training aids is on a nice sunny day, which unfortunately it's not here in the UK right now, is to stand with the sun behind you and actually to use your shadow. A little bonus tip there, something that's really gonna help you. Now what I actually want you to do to help you learn this pivot is to drop the club on the ground. Get into your golf posture and instead of having your arms in front of you, pop them on the side of your leg. Now from here, I just want you to make a backswing where you turn, you slide your left hand down to the edge of your left knee and your right hand up to your right hip. It's gonna look something like this. Now the reason why this drill is awesome is because it helps you also develop some inclination to your pelvis and your shoulders. Easy, that's just a fancy way of saying you just get a little bit of tilt to your pelvis and your shoulders. So if I do it from this angle, you can see I'm sliding my right hand up, left hand down. If you look at my pelvis, you can see it's actually tilted slightly down. Again, this is crucial for, for developing that great pivot. And also you can see the shoulders are there. So just do this a couple of times. Feel what it feels like 
to get into that great top of the back swing position right there, that great pivot position. So I'm still feeling like I've got more pressure in that left leg, but you can see I would have created about a golf ball worth of space right there. Now, once you've done that a couple times, then you can grab a golf club and just try and recreate that same feeling. Put a little bit more pressure in that left foot and then create that same feeling and swing through. Do it a couple of times for me. Feel that great feeling and all the way through. Now, when we also create that nice inclination, you can see, especially with that second strike, just a little bit more purpose, a little bit more divot right there. That's just going to help you with your compression. So it's really important. Not only do we get that centered pivot, but we also get the, get the great inclination to the pelvis and the shoulders. That is the best drill right there. Make sure you give that a go. Now it's all well and good doing the drill, but let me give it a go. Let me show you what it looks like. So I'm gonna to go to the top, try and feel like I create that center pivot, and then I'm gonna turn all the way through. Here's what it should look like. So let's progress up the body one more time. Let's go to something that not a lot of people are talking about and it's called thoracic extension. Now thoracic extension is crucial for giving you a little bit more rotation, but it's also crucial for keeping that head centered. If we didn't have thoracic extension, we would see a lot of the time that players would sort of work into this position where their head sways off. We need a little bit of thoracic extension to get the head back into a centered position. Now, first of all, what is thoracic extension? If I was just to stand here and face down towards the drive range and extend my chest up to the sky, that is what we term as thora thoracic extension. Really simple movement, just extending the chest more towards the sky. Now, how many times do you see golfers, they might get their pelvis working correctly, but the head still sways off this way? Well, it's because they haven't gotten enough of that thoracic extension. So a really simple drill that's gonna help you with this is to grab the club and just pop it into the center of your chest. Obviously the button of the grip's gonna go into your chest. Then from there, just extend your arms down just to where they're comfortable and gripping it right there. Now in this position, tilt forwards into your golf posture, sort of point it towards the ball. I want you to make a backswing and the aim of this drill is to feel like, again, 60, 40, turn, pelvis is doing the same thing, but the aim of this drill is to try and get this club past parallel. If you can get it to or past parallel, you're going to be in a good position. If I get this down, you can see how that's moved my head away from the target. If I then get it a little bit more parallel with some good tilt, you can see how that's brought my head back to a center position. So if you're that golfer who goes, well, I feel like my feet's going pretty well. I feel like my pelvis is going pretty well, but my head's still swaying off. This is the drill for you. So in here, for like, as you turn, you get 60, 40, pelvis moving well, get that nice inclination to the shoulders, get that pass parallel. And you can see how that keeps my head very centered. Now, don't be that golfer who cheats the drill. How do you cheat the drill? Well, if I take my arms and I just bend them like this, obviously I can get that up pretty easily, but that's not achieving the purpose. I want you to get that club up by going into this thoracic extension like we were working on earlier. So into the chest, turn back, but like the chest is getting it up as I have some tilt to the shoulders. That's gonna put you in a great position. You can even then just grab the club in, in that position there, and then you can see good top of the back swing right there. So if you're that golfer who's trying to work on the head position, use that drill. But here's also a great feeling for you where we can tie it all together. So, as I set up to the ball, we're obviously 60-40. We're trying to stay 60-40 and we want the left glute muscle target side of that alignment stick. But we can also use the head as a reference guide relative to the alignment stick as well. We can have our left eye or our left ear feel like it stays over that yellow alignment stick. If I feel like my left eye, left ear is over that alignment stick, obviously my head can swivel. I just don't want it to sway off. My left ear, my left eye is now way over my right foot. So I'm gonna feel like as I turn, I keep my left eye, left ear over the ball, and then I can turn all the way back through. Let me give it a go for you right here. So good positioning, a little bit more pressure in that left leg, and then give it a go. That was a great ball in ground contact, a little draw. That's exactly what we want to achieve. So there you have it. That is how we generate a centered pivot. So hopefully now after watching this video, you have a little bit of a better understanding as to why we want to generate a centered pivot so that it actually makes it way easier for us to move efficiently in the downswing, creating better contacts, better ball flights. Now you sort of understand the different cues we can use, the feet, the pelvis, uh, and the chest in order to create that centered pivot. And also hopefully you enjoyed the visual guide so you can sort of see with, with great players themselves how they go about it, how they create 
create that nice center pivot. Now, if you need a little bit more help on your game, whether it be with creating a center pivot or anything else, then I'd love to help you. I offer online golf lessons on the Skillist platform. You can click the link down below and it will take you straight through to my page. If you have any questions about today's video, please drop them down in the comments. I answer every single comment. Also, if you've enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and subscribe. I'm, a new, I'm still relatively new to YouTube. I've only been on it a couple of months and I would appreciate all of the support. I hope to see you back here soon.